just arrived at our Airbnb in the heart of Napa and it is adorable. It's a romantic cottage with exposed beams and quilts on the bed. It's an open studio feel. So you've got your two queen size beds, TV, sofa for lounging, attached kitchen and a private bath. We are looking forward to uh, exploring the town tomorrow and so we were happy when we got here they have a bottle of wine set out for you and just get you ready and excited to enjoy Napa we're gonna go try some wines see ya We are at St. Clair Brown right now, which is Napa Valley's only winery and brewery combined. This is such a cool space. It is right here in town. It's a relatively small footprint, but they are growing so many variety of edible plants and vegetables and fruits. And it is truly amazing the variety that they've packed into this small space. Shelly is getting the sharp and crisp a variety of wines and I'm getting what's called the range and they also have three different beers that you can try uh, in a flight so we're gonna try those as well and I think we're also gonna get some olives so we are just waiting for it to come out Chardonnay, rosé, and then a, I guess it was the Rhone blend, right? Okay. I'm, what I'm surprised, so we both got different uh, tastings, and so we could try a little bit of everything. And I'm kind of gravitating towards the red wines, which I don't normally. They're very knowledgeable here, and it's a family business, which I really appreciate. We're loving our time here so far. How are the olives? <laughs> really good. I'm hungry. <laughs> Olives for dinner. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> if I had a favorite, I really enjoy the complexities of the Zinfandel. It starts off with this sort of sweet aroma and then moves to a, to a black tea aroma. about the beers here. Uh, Elaine's family is British, so she kind of tends towards a more malt-driven ale style. I'm very surprised in the beers that they have here. They're three old world styles, but they drink with a nice crispness. They don't have this kind of lagging malt sweetness. They are delicious, so if you come here, definitely check out a flight of their beers. This one's mine. We just got to our first stop, the Laird Family Estate. So this is our first winery for wine tasting today. So let's go check it out. They require you to make reservations no matter where you go, what whatever day because of all of the restrictions happening and apparently outdoor tastings are where you the only thing you're allowed to do uh, but we have this place to ourselves so again it is 10 a.m. on a Monday but uh, I, I can't think of anywhere else I'd rather be right now in the old days they would bite into the grapes they could tell just if it was ready if it was ripe enough now they have what they call, well, 
for many years, a refractometer. Remember those kaleidoscopes as a kid? You, get, you take a bunch of grapes, put it in the baggie, squish it up, and pour some into this little cylinder. You hold up to the light, and there's a graph at the end that shows sugar content, the way the, the waves bend. What a great stop here at the Laird Family Winery. The place is beautiful and there is so much outdoor seating and the temperature is perfect. Our wine server, Robert, was awesome. He ran us through all of the wines that we tried and had so much knowledge about the winery, about wine in general, about this whole wine region in California. So it was so much fun, but we're off to the next one. We just left Del Dotto and we had a great time. At first, I think we were a little disappointed yeah, we, because we we signed up for the, the package to see the caves and taste from the barrels and due to all the regulations, they can't have that right now. But, I mean, I think that they, they made the best of what they could make and we had a wonderful host, Ed. So Ed gave us a lot of variety, some whites, some reds, and even broke out some other stuff that. And the property that wasn't was part of it. the property was gorgeous. The property was. Amazing. We had our own little cabana table, uh, completely secluded, and amidst a beautiful garden, alongside the the grapes and the pizza. Oh. So now we're off to the Black Stallion. <laughs> All right, let's go check it out. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. Number one for you is our Vermentino. Our Vermentino is an Italian white, a very light and refreshing and a little bit tart. Two, um, the, the Hell Mountain Cabernet Sauvignon from Hell Mountain where it's the hottest. So this is a really bold Cabernet Sauvignon. Tannins are high and the fruit text fruit is fruity. So it's, it's not an earthy cab, it's more fruity and tanniny. are at Black Stallion Winery. We're just finishing up our tasting. It is a beautiful day and this is our last stop here in Napa. And I, it's a little different than the other tastings. It's a little bit more taste on your own, not as guided. But for your last stop, that's not a bad thing. It's beautiful inside. We're surrounded by these gorgeous uh, vineyards. So we're just touring around at our own pace and having a wonderful time. Well, thanks for joining us on our wine tour. I hope that you got tons of useful information from it. We had such a great time doing it. And Napa Valley has been on our bucket list for so long. So we are so excited to be here to taste some of these delicious wines and share it with you. So we'll see you soon.
Oh, hey. We've got a big smudge in the middle of our lens. And one here and then one here. Do you think it's from the time that you pressed the lens against my face? We're gonna break onto a winery, steal all their wine. Oh wait, that Pro tip, there's free snacks on the vine. <laughs> Don't pay for lunch. <laughs>